So you went out and bought yourself this big fancy pressure cooker. It's got like 56 buttons. It makes toast, it makes meat, it makes soup, it makes rice, it does your kids homework for you. And now you get it out of the box and you're like, how do I use this thing? Well, you came to the right place. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a modern electric pressure cooker. Stay tuned. Okay, so I have two pressure cookers here. I have a Cuisinart over here and I have a Fistler. And I'm gonna take you all through uh, knowing all about pressure cookers and how to use them. So the first question that you might have is what is a pressure cooker? Okay, so a pressure cooker simply is a cooking device that cooks food, specifically by the use of liquids, under pressure. And what does that do is basically if you put any sort of liquid in here, uh, normal water boils at a temperature of 212 degrees, but if you apply pressure to that water, and you bring it to a boil under pressure, the water actually boils at between 230 and 250 degrees. So water can actually get hotter than boiling water. And by doing that, you're actually cooking food hotter and faster. Okay, so that is the purpose of a pressure cooker is to cook food faster. Um, normally a pressure cooker will do anything from eight to 15 PSI or pounds per square inch. That measures the amount of pressure that that water is under inside of the pressure cooker. So that is what a pressure cooker is and very briefly I described to you how a pressure cooker works. So uh, second, you have different kinds of pressure cookers. In this video I'm going to show you how to use electric pressure cookers. So right here I have the Cuisinart which is a very simple pressure cooker. You can see that it basically just has high pressure, low pressure, and then a few cook settings, all right? And then over here we have the Fissler, which is like the Cadillac of, pressure, of electric pressure cookers. And you can see that it has like a thousand different functions. It has, it even, this one even has like yogurt making. You can use it as a sous vide, which keeps food at a very specific temperature. Um, and then we have your meat stew button soup. We have slow cooking. This is also a slow cooker. You have steaming, saute, blah, 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 blah. Now, is this necessary? It depends. If you're doing those things, then yes, I guess it is necessary. But if you're really just looking to pressure cook, then you would basically just need a pressure cooker just like the Cuisinart here, okay? So a lot of you that have even Instapots that have a thousand different functions, I can tell you I've been using pressure cookers for about 15 years. And honestly, even with this um, Cuisinart pressure cooker right here, it has high, high pressure and low pressure. I've only ever actually used high pressure. Like I use pressure cookers maybe every other day, every week, and I have been for the last 15 years as a professional chef. And honestly, I've never used low pressure for anything. Really, I don't see the point because if you're trying to cook foods under pressure, then you wanna use high pressure. And I'm gonna compare this to a stovetop pressure cooker. There's an important point in that a stovetop pressure cooker will get up to like 15 PSI, which means the water or the liquid inside will get up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas electric pressure cookers actually only get to about, you know, they'll cook between seven and 10 PSI, which the food is normally, I think, around 230 degrees. So actually, they don't get as hot or generate as much pressure as a stovetop pressure cooker, but it's still way faster than cooking something by any other means, like in a regular pot or in the oven. Um, advantages between these two is, like I said, if you're looking to make like yogurt and you know use all these different functions, which honestly I've never used any of them, um, and I don't know that you would need to. I would say um, just get a regular good quality pressure cooker. Now both of these are really good quality cookers. <clears throat> the Fissler is, like I said, a German brand that's very, very good, very high quality. This specific pressure cooker, you can see it's all dingy and dinged up and just it looks like it's been through a war. And I wanted to show you this because I've actually used this for like nine years. This thing has been in service for nine years and I've never had to even replace a part. And it's been kicked and dropped and it's been through hurricanes. I mean, this thing has been through hell and back and it still works just as well today as the day I bought it. Okay, so that tells you how good 
the Cuisinart electric pressure cooker is. This Fistler is kind of new. I've only had it for a year, so I can't tell you um, whether it would last as long as this one. However, uh, Fistler, all my other like stovetop pressure cookers are Fistler, and it's a really, really good brand. Let's go through the different parts of the pressure cooker, the parts that you need to know about. All right. So these are obviously the lids. Okay. Um, these are the it's called a floating valve and what this floating valve does is once the liquid heats up and steam starts coming out the steam's going to come out of these holes here okay and once a little stopper goes up the steam's going to lock it you know it's like going to lock itself so no more steam can escape that's that's what creates the pressure now these are here so that if it creates too much pressure just a little bit of steam will come out of these okay and that's normal you want a little bit of steam to come out of that and that also tells you that it's you know the, the high pressure has been reached now these are automatic so even if you know you can't overdo it um, so even if the pressure goes way over it's not possible in, in an electric pressure cooker because uh, it knows what it's doing you don't have to watch it like you would a stovetop pressure cooker another difference between these two is when you want to do you'll see a lot of recipes they'll say like quick pressure release and quick pressure release means that when this is done cooking, you can flip this over and let all the steam out, and that's quick pressure release. Okay, so usually you get like a spoon or something, and you move this with the spoon because a lot of a lot of uh, steam will come out of that. With with the Fistler, it has a really nice button over here, and if you press the button down, it lets the steam out over here, but you won't burn your fingers or anything because it's way over here. So that's like kind of like a luxury option that this one does that this one does not have. Okay. So these are the lids and they come off just like that. Okay, you rotate them and then to put it back on, you lock it in place. Okay, these are the removable inserts where you actually cook the food. This one has a non-stick coating that eventually will start coming off and this is like stainless steel. So again, the Cadillac and the Honda Civic, see? Long and dependable, really fancy. So, along the front panels, you have, this one's really simple. All you need to know is whether you want low pressure or high pressure, and then you set the time, and then you start it, which I'll show you in a, in a minute here. And in this one, you actually have to get into the instruction manual because it's like, you, you kind of need a, a PhD to operate these things just because it has so many functions and you got to actually spend your time reading the instruction manuals to find out what they do, which is always a good idea actually because then that enables you to use this thing for all sorts of things. But if you're just, all you want to do is pressure cook and you want to get this out of the box, then you might have to read the instructions to use a fancy pressure cooker like this. All right, what else do you need to know? You need to know that in order to use a press, an electric pressure cooker or any pressure cooker actually, you usually need at least a cup and a half to two cups of liquid inside of the insert. And that is so that there's enough steam created to create that pressure uh, and then, so there's enough liquid actually to even cook your food. All right, so just always know that whatever you're cooking in a pressure cooker, just to be easy and safe, you should put at least two cups of some sort of liquid or water in there, chicken stock, beef stock, whatever you're cooking. It has to be that much liquid for it to work. Another thing is you don't want to put too much liquid. So normally, usually the insert has markings. See, this says maximum, so you never want to fill any, any liquid or food beyond that mark. Okay, and then um, this one also has it. So there's a 16 cup marker. You probably can't see it from this angle, but you don't want to put, uh, here, this, this one shows it in an easier way. So you don't want to actually ever put more liquid than the top mark because then water and you know, all your food's gonna start spraying out of, of here. You don't want that to happen. All right, so I'm gonna give you an example of how we would cook sweet potatoes, because I happen to have some sweet potatoes. So you put them in there, okay, and you just wanna cover them, just put enough water in there so that you cover the sweet potatoes. And I might put a little bit of salt A 
lock the lid in place, make sure the valve is closed. If you leave it in the open position, all the steam is going to keep coming out of it. So you got to close is usually the, you'll see that if you spin it, it sort of lifts up. You don't want it to lift up. You want it to lay down. Okay. So once it's down, it's closed. So a very minimal amount of steam will escape. Now you go over to the front and you choose from your menu. First option is low pressure. Second option, high pressure. And like I said, I've only ever used high pressure and you probably will only ever need to use high pressure because if you're using a recipe that calls for low pressure, you probably don't even need a pressure cooker. You can just do it in a regular pot. So um, time, so I'm gonna put eight minutes and then you press start. Okay, this is like the easiest pressure cooker to use by far. Now you see how that little dot is blinking? So that means that it's warming up. Okay, once this thing warms up and creates enough pressure for the food to cook, that little dot is gonna go solid and then you'll notice the countdown timer start to count down. That means the food is cooking at maximum pressure. And now you'll start to hear all these sounds and clicks, the clicking is normal. And once it reaches pressure, like I said, that little blinking light will go solid and your countdown timer will start. And that'll tell you that you've reached the maximum pressure and that your food is cooking at the max pressure setting. Now over here, you can see there's a little bit of steam coming out of that, okay? Now, this is what I meant before. If you turn it, more steam will come out. See, look. All right, so you want to not do that. <laughs> okay, so you can see steam came out of that and now it's stopped. And now it's building up pressure because this valve popped up and sealed in all the pressure. All right, so you see that little light just turned solid and now the timer is going to count down eight minutes. It's now at high pressure. Okay, now while the sweet potatoes are cooking off over here, I'm gonna talk about the internal parts of your pressure cooker. Now, the only part of a pressure cooker that you're really ever gonna have to replace at some point is this gasket. Now, usually every pressure cooker has a gasket and they're usually made of silicone. And this is what actually causes or creates the seal that seals off the liquid and keeps the high pressure in there, like it helps the high pressure to form, okay? And these things, I just wash with a little bit of soap and water in the sink, and then I just kind of towel dry them. I never put these in the dishwasher. And you will know if these ever need replacing, if steam ever escapes from the side of the lid. And you will definitely know it, because you'll hear it and you'll see it. Okay, and that means that it's time to replace these silicone gaskets, and then this little valve here has a tiny silicone gasket and that's called a grommet. And that grommet, you know, it might need to be replaced. Um, it, it's rare, but they do, if you use your pressure cooker a lot or if it's very old and it's sat there for a long time, you might need to replace that. And again, you'll notice that you need to replace this if steam keeps escaping from here while it's cooking or if this never actually closes to trap the steam in but you can also read the troubleshooting guide and the instruction manual and that'll pretty much tell you that. Everything else here is usually like stainless steel and will never need replacing and I've had about nine pressure cookers and maybe one out of the nine um, the electrical panel in the front failed but that's about it and that's from using it hundreds of times. Okay it's a little hard to see but the countdown timer has one minute left and you'll see when it's over, it'll start beeping. All right, so we hear the beep and we know that it's done. Now, if you leave this alone, it'll actually stay on the warming function for up to 12 hours. And usually you don't want that. So what you do is you just press the cancel button and now it's off. Okay, so now our pressure cooker is done cooking. If your recipe calls for natural pressure release, it means that you are going to let the, the pressure naturally dissipate and you're not going to do anything to it until this little red stopper drops and the lid unlocks by itself. And that could take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Okay? But if your recipe calls for quick pressure release, it means that you are to release the pressure yourself 
with, uh, with this floating valve. And I'll show you how to do it safely. Is you take a nice long spoon like this and you stand back from it and you let the pressure out. It's a little tricky. There you go. Okay, the little valve dropped and now the locking mechanism has unlocked and you can just remove the lid. Now I'm gonna remove the insert with pot holders and I'm gonna drain out these sweet potatoes. And so here's an example. I've cooked some perfectly cooked sweet potatoes in eight minutes and all the time together is just about half the time it would have taken using a conventional cooking method in a pot. And look how nice and soft these sweet potatoes are. You can just mash them with a fork. And that's kind of the purpose of a pressure cooker, is to make your life easier by cooking foods a lot faster. A little pepper. And these sweet potatoes are ready to go. If you have any questions about pressure cooking, please post them below and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please hit that subscribe button. Your subscriptions help keep this channel alive and they help me make more videos. And if you like the videos, please give the video a like. I would greatly appreciate it. All right guys, thanks for watching. See you on the next video.